Alrighty, we are live at uh, day at damn hold on. Uh, hello everybody, welcome back to Gaming with Gyoza Planet with your host Gyoza Planet. Hello, that's me. And we are back with uh, some Hawked, except this time there isn't a 20 minute queue because I already did the queue time and I started the video when I'm getting into the game. You're welcome. <laughs> so, I hope I do, uh, uh, Let's try that again. I hope that I hope everybody is doing well. And hold on. Um, yes, and then two clicks. Okay. I hope everybody is doing well, and you've had a productive Monday. I actually have had a very productive Monday, surprisingly. Let's get started. Because I have picked up coding again, and Nothing hopefully, nearby. and I made progress. Um, well, it's complicated. Does my mic working? Yes. Okay. I had to disable it for reasons yesterday. So. Oh, they get. That's an enemy. That's not good. You do not want to hear the words enemy nearby when you are the one being pinned by a, an army of robots. Luckily, though, I'm at height and I also have, well, effectively infinite passive healing because of. Oh, yeah, that's bad. Hi. Highlight loot sources. Not great. Yes, quick charge is wonderful, though. So we can get over here and then sit back. Okay, so we've got somebody right next to us. Who has some kind of rifle, I believe. Which would make the most sense. Okay, there's not much we can do. Except kind of... Oh! They left. Or at least they're on the other side of this hill. Which means we can sneak over here and... Grab this loot chest, or weapon chest that I've been going after. Trying to go after, accurately. So, yes, I have uh, been coding, and it has been fairly productive, I will admit. Uh, if you don't know, I am... Okay, hold on. I'm gonna... I just realized that this game is incredibly loud. Like, to the point where I can't actually hear myself. So I don't know if you guys can hear me well. Well... Well then, that was miserable. Uh, um, yeah. Damn. Well, that's on me. I got caught in the open. Oh, those odd. I couldn't see them when they were approaching. Whatever. Let's just hope there isn't another 20-minute queue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, ba -ba -dum -bum -bum. there we go. Let's go into the menus. I'm actually just going to turn down the game a bit because this is far too loud. There we go, that's a lot more reasonable. Which means I can turn up my internal audio, and there we go, I can still hear myself. So, if you don't know, I'm currently attempting to develop a game in Roblox called Showdown, which is a arena fighter game where you and up to, I think, eight? No, you and seven other people, so there's eight in total, players drop into an arena, um, and you've got three lives to duke it out, and whoever's left wins. And you can, and there's gonna be characters, different maps, different types of characters, so like, you'll have the flanker characters who are like fast assassin type characters. Well, assassin type characters is not very accurate. They're fast characters, and they'll have like low health and low defense stats, but they'll be able to move around quickly and usually have like escape options abilities. So like a smoke bomb or a very fast dash or like a checkpoint system maybe, where like you can throw down like a little marker and you warp back to it. Kind of like Tracer from Overwatch, stuff like that. You'll have uh, what we're calling Vanguard characters, which are like, kind of like the cool quote tanks. They've got a lot more health. They're slower, but they've got a lot more health and they usually tend to have like a uh, crowd control abilities not many that is a key thing of the game is that there isn't much cc at all there is still some obviously like but it's gonna be limited mostly anyways yeah they'll have like they'll have like large area of effect attacks or they'll have like a defense up abilities they'll have healing abilities they can like support their allies um etc etc so yeah uh, progress is going alright. I'm currently 
uh, attempting, well, currently I'm making the first character, Warrior, who's like just one of the five starter characters you can have. Uh, because there are five like categories, and so there's one for each. Um, and yeah, he's very, very simple. He's like the basic melee character. He's got like his main attack is like a sword swing. His secondary attack is like a large wheel projectile that uh, um, hits enemies, that like you send forward and it hits enemies. His third attack is a dash, which lets you reposition fast. So like, you can either go towards enemies or away from enemies or like try and avoid like laser attacks or something like that. And then his fourth attack is uh, three like uh, swings around him, like large pulses of, of energy around him that deal pretty hefty damage, but they've got a, they're gonna have like a pretty hefty cooldown. So, yeah. Overall, um, pretty good. Very basic character, not that complicated to design, but and everything. Um, yeah. And it's going all right, minus a couple of rather dramatic issues. So, issue number one, um, you can and do get hit by your own moves. And this is a very big problem because that means, because how, basically, how, so there are many ways to do, like, game design, and currently what I'm doing for, um, actually I think I'm going to pull up, like, MS Paint for this. Paint. I've never actually used this before. So, basically, how it works is that you've got Blob here. This is, that's terrible. This is you, okay? Uh, generic stick figure. Bum. Okay? And so, to attack an enemy, you need to make, a, like, a projectile or something that's going to hit the enemy or like an area this is like a generic area shape that indicates hey if the enemy is in this area they're going to take x damage they're going to take x damage cool so with projectiles that's pretty easy you just say hey i want to summon a projectile like hey i'm going to summon a projectile here and i'm going to give it a uh, like this speed which that's supposed to be a 50 well this is not a game 50 speed and 10 damage. D M G S P. Sure. 50 SP. Okay, that's for projectiles. That's pretty simple. And it goes off in a set direction. If you got something like homing, it's a bit more complicated, yada yada. Cool. If you're gonna make like an area, like an area of attack though. It's a bit more difficult because you have to say, okay, I'm going to summon an area, and if I can actually, can I just like, yeah, I'm going to rewind. If I'm saying, okay, I want to make a, a melee attack, which is a bit more complicated because melees, melee attacks aren't projectiles, they're set zones in front of you. So you're saying, okay, I'm going to swing here, and everything inside this area right here is going to take damage. Cool. Problem is, the way you do this is there are multiple ways to do it. Um, but the way I'm currently doing it is that I'm having this be an actual, like, shape. It's like a block that you summon midair, and basically, if the enemy is touching the block as they are right now, they take, uh, I don't know, 10 damage. Same as before. That's terrible, 10. I need to get myself, like, a tablet or something to draw. They'll take 10 damage. Problem is, if you're moving, this does not move with you. The block stays in midair where you summoned it. Now you can make it move, which is how you do it with projectiles and such. But not with melee attacks. So that causes a problem because if you are moving, let's say, forwards, and you summon the block right here, what's going to happen is that this is the melee attack zone. You are going to walk into your own melee attack, which is a problem. Because current oh good game's loaded. Currently, this still hurts you. This is danger. So basically, you're swinging your sword and then walking into the, your own swing, which hurts you. This is not great. Actually, it's absolutely terrible because this means that uh, no. Uh, this means that you can't actually <laughs> attack enemies. The only way you can reliably attack enemies is with uh, the Q ability, which is the like flame wheel projectile. It's like yeah, it's supposed to be burning flame wheel. Currently, it's just a generic shape. Uh, I'm gonna work on the fancy stuff once we actually have the game coded and everything. So that's a very big problem. 
mainly because it's caused a very humor strategy where the best way to get it to eliminate an enemy is not directly attempt to eliminate them yourselves. It's to have them eliminate themselves by using the F ability because what it does is that it summons like a large ring of energy around you. And I did give you like a bit of buffer room, but like if you're walking at all, you're going to get hit by it. And because the way I'm doing things, um, well, I suppose a good way to explain is that I am, I have done what is arguably, there are three ways to do uh, hitboxes in Roblox. One of them is terrible, one of them is okay, and one of them is like the arguably best. So the first way is using something called uh, dot touched, which basically means did it like, did something interact? Like has something interacted with this object? Yes, no. If so, then it does X. I. So basically, what it says is, an example of get of dot touch should be, like this wooden thing right here. If I walk into it, the game checks and it says, okay, do, like when I walk into it, it says, okay, turn green, and the wood would turn green. This is nice and all, except it has a couple of problems. Number one, it's quite unreliable for a couple of reasons. A, Roblox does not have incredibly good servers. And I mean, like, when I say not incredibly good, I mean they're completely unreliable. Which means, what happens is that the game says, okay, you're touching this, and then it sends that several times. So that means if uh, this block was coded to, let's say, deal 10 damage to you and I walk onto it, there's a chance that it's going to do 10 damage two, three, four times, which is really bad if you have something like a melee hitbox because then that means the enemy takes two to four times the amount of damage that they're supposed to. Oh, well, that was easy. <laughs> nice. Alrighty. So, that's also not good. That's one of the reasons. Other one is that Somebody's it... close. Nah, crud. Okay. Let's get up here and try and get some height on the area and survey the scene to see what's going on. That's AI. It says enemy nearby. That means they're in a 100 meter radius. Okay, found them. And they are right down here. Guessing. Okay, we're gonna drop down. Oh, so if you hear it. Okay, there we go. Eh, not great shots on my end, but it'll do. So if you're ever curious, uh, so ooh, nice upgrades. If you ever happen to be curious as to why I do the melee attack when I'm falling, it's that it's mainly because doing the melee attack completely cancels the stun animation from falling from large heights. You can also, actually, I will demonstrate it right here as soon as I grab this chest. Uh, nah, not worth. It. Boom. Nothing. You can also do the same effect by rolling. Rolling is, well, it, I suppose the, there's pros and cons to it. The pro of rolling is that you can immediately act out of it. Like there's no pause. You fall down and you just start working. Like you can start moving, fighting, sliding, whatever, like near, near immediately. Downside is it costs 40% of your stamina bar, which is pretty hefty if you're not using if you don't have a haste bust, if you don't have a haste buff active or a character, like a character kit that gives you haste constantly, like for example the uh, the Diego da Luz one, you get bonus stamina when you're unarmed and you also run faster. So there, rolling is completely fine. Also, there is an artifact that gives you a one free roll every ten. It's like eight seconds or so. So if you have that, rolling off of ledges is actually a wonderful idea because. It costs you nothing, and it's very worth it. That's an enemy. Somebody's yep. Close. I was right. They're over oh, there. Well, they're climbing up. Okay. I'm gonna go over here. We're gonna get up here. This area... Ah, crud. I forgot about... The... I forgot that there would be enemies here. Not good. Not good. <sighs> Where did they go, is the question. Oh, up top of the sea. Oh, yeah, found them. Alrighty, we're gonna walk out here and. 
Oh, they've just parked right up here. Ooh. Hey, I've got a wonderful idea. Oh, I really, I, I'm out of ammo. Ah, I'm stuck. There's a ledge there. There we go. Uh, I don't think they saw me hanging from the ledge, which is very fortunate. I'll be honest, I probably should have led with a revolver shot there, but yeah, you'll live, you learn. Comic cutter. Yeah, why not? Uh, actually, yeah. Okay, we'll take the common cutter, but uh, what that means is I need to find myself an assault rifle, mainly because um, I no longer have a mid-range option. The comic cutter is like designed for long range. It can work at medium range, but it's not really worth it. It's not a great idea. So I, ideally, I I want to find myself something like a BTAR rifle. Somebody's close. Ah, yeah, great. That's not good. I will get back to the coding talk in a minute. I want to, first off, not die. Enemy spotted. There we go. Well, that was uh, not that bad. Nice. Okay. That's a Delta unit. We can fight them to get, a, get more loot. Okay. So yeah, basically, I need a rifle now. Not great, but there are a ton of loot chests around here, so not too difficult to obtain. Anyways, point is, so yeah, the problem with dot touched is that it's effective, it's cheap, and it's simple, but it can it causes problems down the way, and it's also incredibly unreliable. The second way is to do a uh, can collide, or like what's called uh, collision groups. I'm fairly certain. I might be confusing the two here because collision groups is another thing I've been attempting to learn, which basically says, like, are you X, for example? Are you object named X? If you are, I can interact with you and you turn green. If not, I can't interact with you. This is ideally the, the uh, this is the ideal manner in which you say, hey, is does this, okay, hold on. Right, so there's three ways I was saying. There's dot touched. I've talked about that. There's a second one. I'm not actually sure what it is. Um, and then there's the fancy solution, which is complicated, which is what's known as a uh, ray tracing, which basically is just a very fancy way of saying you use beams of light uh, to detect if an enemy is in the path of the thing you are trying to do. Use a nade to weaken the... Yeah. There we go. Ooh, phew. So, what do we get? Stagger shots. Not bad. I'll take it. Anyways, let's go give this air drop. Uh, where was I? Um, PV damage, that would have been useful 30 seconds ago, but who knows. Anyways, so, yeah. So the third one Somebody is knows. what's called ray tracing, which is basically, you use beams of light that come out of an object to detect if something has passed through. Outrider, yes, that's, I don't have a weapon for that slot, so it's just free. Oh, got two players. Oh, never mind. It's just a player in AI. Stand still, please. Yeah. See, this is the problem: is that I, the Mazikin stops being reliable at that like middle range. I'll take the Zed. Yeah. So basically, how it works is that imagine you've got a box, and there's a laser in the box, and the laser is emitting from the box to like a whiteboard or something. If you put your hand in front of the laser, the laser is going to cut off. Now, let's say, for example, there's a sensor on the wall that tell that can tell when something is touching the laser, like when it's receiving. Uh, wait, why am I going here? No, I don't. I do not need to extract. I need to go grab the <laughs> glyph. Wrong thing. Yeah. So basically, yeah, you've got laser and then you've got the wall. And 
Yeah. And if you put your hand in front of the wall, the sensor suddenly notices, hey, I'm not getting light anymore. There must be something in the way. This is how ray tracing works, is that it sends out invisible, like, rays in, in front of, like, in the direction that you indicate, and it checks, is there something in the way? If there is, it does something. If there isn't, it keeps work going. Now, this is incredibly good for melee attacks, because what it does is that you can make, um, for example, if you have custom animations where a character does, like, an, like a sideways swing, um, you can check multiple times during that swing Hey, is there something in the way? Oh, also, I see a player. I'm gonna try and snipe him. Because I don't really want to engage, because this is incredibly disadvantageous for me. Nah, I missed. Now, do they notice, or are they completely oblivious? Well, they seem to have taken cover, at least. Or they just kept going, and I... Somebody's close. Yep. That would be them. Oh, yeah, we can see them on the minimap. They made noise, which probably means they're going after this. Which means it's a, uh... Yeah. I'm out of grenades. This is terrible news. Hmm. Uh, that, that, uh, that can be useful. Oh, that's not... Oh, boy. Oh, right. Well, that's nice. I just got myself a free glyph, which basically means I can go to the treasury. Oh. Nice. Okay, they're hurt. Grab this to show off if they double back or not. Nope. They are trying to get up top. Ah, they're going for the treasury, which is a smart move. I wonder if they have all the glyph stuff. Oh, they're just waiting up top. They're probably healing, actually, if I think about it. So, yeah. Ray tracing is the ideal way to uh, well, do melee attacks because what it lets you do is that you can make much more custom melee attacks. You can, for example, do like animated swings and everything. And it also lets you detect, like, are there multiple enemies in the way? It also makes guns more accurate and stuff and etc. So, overall, Oh, oh, perfect. I was about to say, I would love a gl uh, hush glyph right now to be able to get over here. And avoid having to fight the Delta unit, which is the name of that guy. Also, we're going to take this. Oh, those are land moves. That's This is bad. I also can't parkour up there. That's also fair. Somebody's close. Uh, parkour. No, that's bad. That's... this is terrible. Oh, there they are. I can't hit him. What? Lucky me. Uh... Oh. Okay. Far point uh, and a comp cutter. I think I'll take the. I'll stick with the Z. Okay. Bad news. They absolutely had a revive, which means we need to grab this and get out of here for ASAP because they are going to be back and in no short order. Oh, perfect. They can sh show up their location. A thousand meters away. Okay. Never mind. I think they might have burned their revive early in the match. Alternatively, the system might just be completely bugged. You never know. Uh, we spot damage, I'll take it. Because, it, actually, fun fact, the uh, Skull Glyph, even though it says, um, it says bonus weak spot damage, that's true, it gives plus 15% headshot damage. What it also does is that it gives plus 40%, I think it is, um, a range on your guns, which is actually pretty decent. So, yeah, it's not a bad one to have, especially if you're going to the extraction, for example. Although, see, as, as there isn't anybody here, I might as well just re-roll it for something a bit better. Anyways, yeah. So those are the three ways. Um, currently, I'm using the first method, the worst one, mainly because uh, I don't actually have any animations for my characters, per se. So, 
Yeah, I, I don't know. If I wanted to do it clean and proper and everything. Wow, these explosions are loud. Okay. If I wanted to do it clean, proper, and how you should, what I would do is I would make uh, custom animations for each ability, and then I would have, if it's like a melee ability, for example, I would have the, like, uh, the, like, hit zone of the ability be tied directly to animation, which means this actually has a bonus effect where that means, like, if it's, like, your character swinging around in the circle, which is the fourth ability of the character that I'm currently working on, no matter where you go, you're always going to be hitting, like, the damage area always follows you because, well, the your weapon is connected to you, the player, and then since you move around, the weapon moves around with you, and then thus the damage zone also moves around. That's how the best way to do it would be. However, A, I don't actually know how to animate properly. B, so, I don't know how to animate. I don't know how to do ray tracing. And, um, yeah, they are both rather complicated things to learn. So, yeah. Uh, actually, how long, how long have I been recording? I don't know. Uh, Hawk match is usually 20 minutes, so, yeah. I think I'll call it here. Anyways, yeah, that has been my day, mostly. But, uh, yeah. Anyways, the long and short of it is I'm currently trying to make uh, my character. It is not, it's going alright, but there are a lot of problems, and I don't know how I should do it, because I can either do it the cheap way now and get a finished result, but it means it's going to be an absolute hassle in the future to try and recode everything, or I could sit down and delay everything, although there isn't really a deadline, but I could, yeah. I could put everything on hold and try to learn the quote-unquote proper way to do it, but that would be incredibly tedious and unpleasant, so... Yeah. For now, I don't know what I exactly have planned, but, um... Yeah. I'll, up I'll update you guys as it goes along, which will probably be every day, because this is basically my morning. I wake up, breakfast, usually go to the pool, um, code, uh, lunch, and then well, video and then gaming, so, yeah. I'll update you guys, and I might actually show off a bit of the game once it, uh, reaches a playable state, because currently it is, um, barely playable. <laughs> yes. Anyways, uh, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all tomorrow, and ciao! Uh, yeah, I don't like doing this.